choose him. Come on, you hear me? You didn't choose him. He chose you. Yes. He could have left you out in sin. He could have left you out there in the world to die lost. Yeah. He did not. He did not have to call you. That's right. He didn't have to choose you. He didn't have to save you. Boy, got quiet. Come on, come on. It's only by the grace and the mercies of God that we are what we are today. Amen. Amen. If it wasn't for His calling, I'd still be out there in the world doing the things I did 20 years ago when He called me out of that mess. Amen. Or in the graveyard somewhere. But thank God for His calling. Amen. Thank God He chose us. Amen. I said thank God He chose us. Hey Amen. I'll tell you right now, you ought to be shouting about that. Because if you're a chosen vessel and you've been filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name, my God, you will bless somebody. Huh? Hey Amen. Me and uh, Bishop Carter and, and Brother Cook over there, we always argue, the three of us do, over who's his favorite child. I believe mine. Of course, they, they think they are, but I don't know who daddy is. I know who daddy loves, it's me. Amen. Because I know he had to go the deepest to get me. He had to go to the far farthest pit to pull me out. So I know he loved me more than he did anybody else. But I love the Lord. Thank him for his goodness, his mercy. Amen. Uh, May the 19th, he puts us down in the book beyond to Carlisle, Tennessee. That's down next to Paris. We're going to be having our anniversary. Our building's 100 year old. Amen. Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. We believe in baptizing. Amen. Church of Christ. We believe He's the anointed. Amen. Amen. Jesus' name, because that's the only name given. Come on. Amen. Amen. We we uh, went down there six years ago, a little Baptist church, and Amen. They had six women sitting up in there, and and they asked me to preach for them, and I told them, I said, well, "Look here, I'm not Baptist." Oh, we know, we know, but we want you to want you to preach. So I preached down there for about three months. Amen. Scared to death to preach on women. That's all I had. And my wife was one of them, so that really scared me. Amen. But now we've been down there six years and we run about 25, 30, and we got as many men as we do women. Amen. Amen. Young people like these two here, this is one of my teachers. From my church, Brother Eric, he's also my nephew, and his wife, Crystal. They're teachers in my church. Amen. Praise God for them. And yeah. Thank God for a, a young group. Amen. Most of our churches, uh, I think, I'm, I'm the oldest man there, which I'm young. I really am. And then, and then uh, there's two other women that are a little older than I am. One of them's in her 80s or, or 70s, and the other one's in her 50s. And the rest of them are just kids in their 20s and 30s. Come out of drug addiction. Amen. Come out of addicted homes that are addicted with drugs and alcohol. Amen. Got one young man. He's a minister of music in my church, a tent preacher. And when he started the church, he had seven felonies. 13 felonies. And was doing seven years house arrest. And the kids all started telling him, you need to come to church. He I ain't going down there. You need to come to church. I ain't going down there. One Sunday morning, he came down, and he was standing up in the front, and all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost hit that boy. Man, he went to crying, and the next thing we know, he was, I thought he was going to jump through the floor of that old building. Come on. Holy Ghost man. got on him. The heat, right. Man, it's, it's just great to see young folk yes. serve God. Yes. Yes. You don't know the opportunity you young people listen to. You don't know the opportunity that you have right now to serve God. I had a lady we buried last year, I believe it was. She'd been in church ever since she was 13 years old. We buried her. She was 89. And been in church since she was 13. Baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and lived for God all her life. What a wonderful testimony. Amen. Never smoked a cigarette a day in her life. Never did. Never done drugs or alcohol. What a wonderful testimony. Yes, come on. Amen. But I also like them testimonies, these young ones, when they come to God and they say, God brought me out of that. Yes, come on. Amen. God can keep you from all kinds of stuff. But it's a blessing when you can hear a young person say, 
God brought me out of that. And I no longer need that. I no longer have to live that way. Amen. And I'm a changed individual. Amen. You just, I mean, if you've never been there, you don't understand what it's like, I guess. Amen. But God is so good. We're, I, I believe that we, like the preacher said last night, we're living in the last days. Amen. Preacher, man of God talked about how earthquakes and, and things of that nature are getting worse. A man with NASA called a pastor friend of mine. He works at NASA and he said that uh, the Andreas Fault that runs from Memphis through Arkansas up through Alabama and, and, and over into Arkansas and, and all around the mid mid east is fixing to, to tear up some stuff. So they're already hiring big companies to come in and do the cleanup. Even hiring mortuaries and such as that to be ready to be burying folk because of the deaths that's fixing to come. They said they've been watching this and it's it's, it's just about to fix it to happen. And the preacher said that his birth pains, it, that the earth is giving forth travail and getting ready to be took out because you know, travail is new birth. Come on. Yeah. And the Bible says there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Yes. This earth has got to give up. Yeah. It's got to lay down. It's got to die. Right. And if you're not ready tonight, if you're not ready tonight to meet the Lord when He calls, you're in a good place. You're in a good place. I, I know that there's there's several men of God in here and women of God, I can tell just by looking, that, that would be willing to pray with you. That would be willing to pray with you. Listen, it's no shame in coming to the altar, children. There's no shame. The shame is is when you sit here and God calling on you and you hold back and you don't go to the, and find Him. I was in Alabama once before and, I, and there was two boys sitting in the back of a tent revival. One of them was by my size and it was a little bitty fella. And that boy by my size, he told the big that little bitty fella, he said, let's go up there. That little boy says, I ain't going up there. Come on. That big boy says, Come on, go up there with me. He says, I ain't going up there. He said, I ain't going neither. So I just turned around and walked back there. And I said, So if he dies tonight in the car wreck and you're with him and you die, I tell you, you'd rather go to hell with him Come on. than to go to heaven right. with Jesus. I didn't say that. I said, Gee, did. I said, God's calling you and you refuse God. Children, when God's drawing at you, when God's drawing at you, the time is now. The time is now. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Right now, you may never get another chance. So I want, I want, to, I want to tell you right now, if God begins to draw to you in any part of this service, and I'm just a visitor here, but I'm going to tell you right now, if the man of God don't say this, then I'm going to house. <laughs> But at any time you want to get a hold of God, that altar's open. And I'll guarantee you, I'll pray with you. Come on. My, my, my boy here, he'll pray with you. Amen. I mean, don't sit back. Don't sit back and miss that opportunity to come serve God. Because there's nothing greater. There's nothing. I know, because I've tried it all. I'm 54 years old, and I've done everything a man could ever do. I've tried it all, and ain't nothing like Jesus. Right. There ain't no feeling like Jesus. Right. And if God begins to draw to you, if God begins to call you to this altar at any part of this service, don't sit back and wait. That's right. If God's dealing with you right now, don't oh, sit back and wait. That's right. Amen. You go ahead and answer that call because it may be your last That's one. Right. Amen. We love you. I thank God for keeping His hand on us as we traveled coming up here. It rode about three hours to get here, two and a half hours, three hours. Amen. But we wanted to come and hear the Word. So I'm going to get out of the way. Okay,